Gary Lockett from nearby Coombran, he is the big hitter. Beaten just once in 10 years, the Rocket boasts 19 stoppages. He has the edge in power as well as home advantage. Ryan Rhodes from Sheffield, like Lockett, was a brilliant light middleweight. He's a skillful mover and switch hitter. Both 29, both have won their last 10. It's a 12-rounder then for Lockett's WBU World Middleweight title. Your commentators, Duke McKenzie and first, John Rawling. Seconds out, round one. This really is a classic puncher versus boxer confrontation. Lockett, the man with the knockout reputation, and Ryan Rhodes, the man with boxing skills, which at once, one time, looked as though they're going to take him right to the very top. This is Lockett defending his WBU title at middleweight, and he is a big favourite with the bookies, but they're all on the left hand straight away, and Rhodes touched down there. Now, is that a knockdown? And Mickey Van having a look at Ryan Rhodes, and he's giving him the count. He's giving him the count. Yeah, he's caught him early, thinking that's the biggest mistake of Ryan Rhodes' uh, fight so far. It's just, he's come out with his chin up in the air, and, you know, Lockett is such a dangerous puncher. Well, the feeling was that Rhodes had to somehow get through the early stages, and now it's Lockett who touches down. Now, is it that's a slip? It is indeed. And the action continues. Fascinating start already. But Rhodes, is he... Has he got the punch resistance to get through this early storm from Lockett? He has to weather the early storm, John. It's the only chance he's got of winning. He has to try and stay out of the way of this thunderous assault that he's getting from Lockett. 12 rounds, of course, the championship distance. And a big opening round already for Gary Lockett. Rhodes has suffered defeat on three occasions in the past. Otis Grant, Jason Matthews and, most shockingly, four years ago against Lee Blundell and if he were to lose tonight you really would wonder where he would go with his professional career from here but he's got to somehow just ride it out here and he's got to try and keep a tighter defence than the one which has already leaked. But he's, he's, he's employed the wrong tactic for my liking John he's, he's taken the fight to the puncher and when you've got somebody as dangerous as Lockett in front of you you have to try and be musing try and try and just try and stay on the outside for the first couple of rounds at least and just try and let him punch himself out. Well, Lockett has, in Rhodes' eyes, a tendency to be one-dimensional. Maybe, maybe not. But that one dimension at the moment is bossing this opening round. And Rhodes now is very much on the back foot. Both of them 29 years old. Rhodes keeps switching from right to left, southpaw to orthodox stance. Caught another left hook in there, Duke. Yeah, he certainly did, in order to try and confuse Lockett. But, you know, Lockett is patient, and we know that he is a puncher. Well, last few seconds of the opening period, and the knockdown, of course, means that it's going to be a 10-8 round on the judges' scorecards. really been pretty much one-way traffic in Lockett's favour in this opening round. Let's take another look at how that knockdown came. Well, I don't know. It was a glancing blow. It was towards the temple area, I think. Yeah, it wasn't a clean shot. It wasn't a clean shot, but it was enough to put him down. It hit him actually around the back of the head caught him off balance as much as anything well it was a knockdown John and the ref the referees called it so you know it's a two-point round to um, to lock it not yet not yet not yet Paul. Corners, 10 seconds. seconds out round two lock it the local favorite has the knockdown to his name, and 12 rounds will look an awful long way away. Now, Rhodes has somehow got to try and get some sort of way in which to get himself back into this fight. He's got to try and impose himself, and so far he's not found a way to do it. It's all Lockett, particularly with those powerful left hook. Well, you'd expect uh, Rhodes to try and outbox the puncher rather than take the fight to him and try and outslug him. He's not going to do that in the early stages. Ryan, Ryan Rhodes, of course, who 
learnt his trade in the Brendan Ingle gym, now switched to Dave Caldwell. And he, like so many fighters, like Harold Graham, like Nazim Hamed, he has that tendency to keep his hands low. He's got power in those gloves, but he does tend to drop his gloves, and that gives Lockett his great opportunity. Absolutely. Lockett, he's like a cobra, he's just waiting to pounce. He's waiting to strike, he's just waiting for Rhodes to lead off or he can counter the punch, the, his, his counter punches. Good body shots, trying to get Rhodes to drop his gloves and Rhodes' corner saying, don't stand there. Good counter from Rhodes. Rhodes is a very good boxer when he uses his boxing brain. He has to keep his hands up and his chin down and just employ that tactic. Well, no damage done, I don't think, from that knockdown. Rhodes looks as though he's recovered properly now. And he's starting to settle into this fight. Ooh, good right hand from Lockett. Look. Rhodes shakes his head as much as to say it didn't hurt me, but he caught him pretty flush. When the big punches are landing, it's Rocket who has the, the more success. Because he is, as we've said before, John, the puncher of the two. It's a good right hand in there from Rhodes. And that commanded the attention of Lockett. A little bit of marking already around the left eye of Lockett. And uh, that could be a factor, that right hand has already caught the left eye and it's just starting to swell up a bit below the left eye and Lockett does have a tendency to cut. Good right hand again from Rhodes, he's doing enough to take this round at the moment, he the way I'm reading it. He certainly is, John. Um, if, if Rhodes can keep employing his boxing skills, then you would expect him to capitalise on that and maybe try and get his nose in front. I remember four years ago when Gary Lockett lost to Yuri Tsarenko of Belarus on an undercard down here, it was a Calzaghi undercard, and on that occasion, he took a really bad beating. It took some time to come back from that. And he does tend to maybe sometimes run out of ideas the further a fight goes if he doesn't get in with the big shots. Yeah, he loses concentration, uh, does Lockett. So the longer the fight goes, the, the more it's going to suit Rhodes. That's if he can get over this initial first few rounds. Good right hand from Lockett. Not a lot in it this second round, but I just get the feeling that Rhodes has maybe done enough to win this one on superior boxing ability. He's got himself right back in there. You don't want to throw it, fiddle about with me in front of him with that left jab. You Corner, just... 10 seconds. Right. Stay there, stay there, stay there. He's got he's got Seconds out. Third round, and many people said that this was going to be a really good trade fight, and that's the way it's certainly looking. It's a, it's a pick em fight at the moment, and Lockett not only damaged under the left eye, he's got a swelling starting to come up on his forehead. It's a strange place to get a, a, a bruise like that, John. He's not been headbutted at all, so we can only presume it's by the punch. But you've got Rhodes now sort of gone into the counter-puncher mode, which is a good tactic to employ. It. Left eye at so early in the fight, I think his corner will be a little bit worried by the damage that there is there. And Rhodes is a switch hitter and spearing him with that southpaw jab. Well, it's it's nice and snappier work from Rhodes now. And Lockett's just waiting just a little bit too long now to get his punches off. Both have a lot of experience. Lockett's been a pro since back in 1996. Rhodes a year earlier former British champion, won the Lonsdale belt outright when he was only 20 years old. Two defences in those days, did it in a period of just 91 days. And he's settled into his work well now, Duke. Rhodes is really starting to fancy it. He's had a look at the damage, and we're not looking at a six-round fight, we're looking at a, you know, he's a, he's a championship fighter, is Rhodes, and he will feed off of that damage that he's done to, to uh, Lockett's up right and left eye. Came very close back in 1997 to winning a world title, did Ryan Rhodes, against that crafty Canadian Otis Grant, who went on to fight Roy Jones Jr. And at the moment, Lockett has got a few problems in there, and he has not really landed a particularly authoritative shot for some time. There's that flashing left hook, but Rhodes was cute to it, and the reactions kept him out of harm's way. Interesting fight, Duke. It certainly is. I think there's a little bit of blood just seeping out of that bruise on Lockett's left eye. 
Yep. Well, Rhodes can't miss with his right hand when he switches to the southpaw stance and leads off with that right. And the switch hitting is really confusing Lockett. At last now, Lockett does manage to get in with that body shot. Well, he, Rhodes has got Lockett right where he needs to have him right now on the back foot. And if he can keep him there, this is where he can do his best work. He just has to flick and pick with the punches. He doesn't have to get involved. You know, you don't get involved against the puncher. You just try and bemuse him a little bit. Keep a nice, steady, high work rate. Keep your hands up, your chin down, and just try and confuse them, because they do run out of ideas. Rhodes allowing his gloves to fall by his sides and just uh, maybe taunting Lockett a little bit, and that'll be a slightly worried reaction from the Rhodes corner. Concentrate, you're doing. You lost that round big, okay? Because you didn't do nothing. Well, this is the punch now, which we can have a look at now from the first round, which may be the one which uh, opened up. Ah, now, clash of heads. That was perhaps where the lump on that head came. That was in the second round. I beg your pardon. Yep, that's the one jump. They just came. To, they just came close together. Uh, an accident, accidental infringement, and hey, that's what that was caused. Oh, no, you've got all the energy going now. Keep that job, double up on it, and walk off it. Don't stand now, sure. just walk down the ring. Go down to the ground and fiddle about with that left hand in front of him. Wave it in front of him. Right, wave it in front of him. Now. Come on, hold it up there. Enter the fourth round, and it's shaping up to be a close fight. See, the puncher, uh, lock it has to have a firm base to throw his punches from. He's flat-footed, good body shot by him though. He's flat-footed, and that's, how it, that's where he gets his power from. So providing Rhodes can give him plenty of angles to punch from, every time he moves his feet, he knows that he can just land him with a shot. There's a bit of a question mark about how well Lockett had taken his punching power up to the middleweight division, because of course he started as a light middle. A few questions answered by that spectacular win which we saw in Newport back in March when he finished Gilbert Eastman in the first round. That was a spectacular knockout win. And he is a danger man. As long as he's in there, that could be a factor. Problems earlier in his career with breathing difficulties at Lockett. Sorted that one out and there again you see Rhodes switching trying to bamboozle Lockett, going from the orthodox stance once more now into Southpaw. When Rhodes allows Lockett to come forward, that's where Lockett has his best work. That's where he's more effective. He has to keep him on the back foot. He can do that by employing a nice, well-educated jab and just give the boy plenty of angles. Just keep switching, because every time uh, Rhodes switches for, in, from stance, you know, Lockett, he closes up shop. He's not quite sure what to do. Rhodes making Lockett look a little bit clumsy in this round, but is he landing enough punches? I don't think he is at this stage. No, Lockett's it's just starting to come on strong again. It's a good round for Lockett. Rhodes is just waiting off too long now and allowing Lockett just to take the play away from him. And the Rhodes corner just urging their man into a little bit more action and Gary Lockett seems to have now find his rhythm again he got that first round knockout and now he's starting to just have the advantage of these exchanges it'll be interesting to see how, how that eye holds up over the preceding rounds but it's a good round for Lockett nice snappy punches keeping Rhodes on the back foot Interestingly, they've both undefeated in their last ten fights, these fellas, and they both suffered their first defeat in their 17th fight. Well, yeah. And and they were born within a few days of each other. Well, I mean, they've got so much in common, it's quite incredible, really, John. But this really has to be a crossroads fight for both boxers.
understand me. Yeah. You're the champion now. Come on, get out there and finish this fellow. Seconds out. Round five. You're the champion was the words of advice from Brian Hughes to Gary Lockett. You're the champion. Get out there and fight like one. Well, that's pep talk. That's getting his fighter charged up. You can expect a big round from Lockett. And already, Rhodes connects on that damaged left eye and once again, blood begins to seep from the cut. Rhodes needs to try and, um, he needs to try and draw Lockett's lead where he can counter from the southpaw stance. He's much more effective that way. He needs to start banging over the left hand straight onto that eye of Lockett's if he can. Good left hand from Lockett, good hand speed. So as Rhodes led off behind that right hand lead, just clipped him with a really good, fast, short left hook. And Lockett getting to work on the body. Rhodes needs to up his work rate here, needs once again to do something different to get into this fight. Sense that the tide at the moment is flowing in Lockett's direction. Well, Lockett's working that much harder. Rhodes is posing too much. He's, he's taking a scent with the ring, but he's not, it's not working behind it. He's not even really using his jab. Absolutely right when you said at the end of the last round that this is a crossroads fight. Both these fighters, were they to lose here, it would be difficult for them to come back. Better, better shot from Rhodes. Can has got power himself, Rhodes. Let's not underestimate that. 23 stoppages in his 30, 35 wins. CP, he's just waiting much too long now. He's allowing Lockett to, to work the body as well. Rhodes really hasn't thrown anything of any significance in this round. He's just waiting too long. Well, the fight's slipping away from him at this stage. That's better. Good right hand from Rhodes. But then, it was one, and then back comes Lockett. Yeah, Lockett answered him straight away. It's Lockett at the moment. He's fighting like the guy that he wants to win. Rhodes needs to find something from somewhere. He needs to draw on all that wealth of experience that he has and really try and pull something out the bag. He needs to establish a jab, Duke. He's got to find a way of, get, of, of driving him back. Well, yeah, the single shots aren't working for him. He's trying to walk Rhodes down, but he's not putting the combinations together. It's better from Rhodes. Good body shots and a little bit of a nod from Lockett. He can't fight going back, Ryan, but you can't just walk to him. You've got to step in with your jab and you've got to push him. You've got to back him on the ground, Ryan. Let's go back in time. Let's fire. Seconds out. Round six. Into the sixth. And you heard between rounds Ryan Rhodes' corner saying, as we were suggesting, that he's got to establish his jab and find a way to push Lockett back because Lockett is no counter puncher. He doesn't fight well in reverse gear. And as Rhodes allows him just to come forward, all the time that is playing into Lockett, the champion's hands. Well, if you allow Lockett to push you back, he's going to grow in confidence. You know, any any puncher, if they've got you on the back foot, then you know you know you're in trouble. Body shot from Lockett. But if Rhodes can keep pushing him back, keep feeding him the jab. Keep giving him the angles, sure enough, an opening will come. Nearing the midway stage of the fight. On an hour cards, we've got Gary Lockett in the blue shorts ahead at this point. He certainly is, Johnny's doing a good job. Oh, good hook. Nice hook from Lockett there. Nice little snappy one, two, three combination punches. Again, just a single shot from Rhodes through a purposeful looking right hand and then 
almost admired it as back came Lockett. Well, there's a good body shot by Rhodes, uh, Lockett. by Lockett, sorry. Sure that Lockett's trainer Brian Hughes will have instilled in him the belief that he cannot just take or cannot guarantee taking Rhodes out with a single shot. Rhodes may have that supposed fallibility in the chin, and that's better work from the challenger, better work from Rhodes. Pushes Lockett into reverse gear. These punches, they have, a, they do have an effect on you. Though know, Roy Ro Rhodes thinks that he's blocking them, they do have an effect on you. Well, he winked across to his corner, as much as to say, "Don't worry about it. He's not hurting me in there." But that's all well and good, and he may not be. But Rhodes needs to do more if he's going to win rounds. Lockett, remember, had Rhodes down in the first round. That was a 10-8 round. And on that basis, I've got to have Lockett at least a couple of points ahead at this point. Yeah, I've got him a couple of rounds up, John. Right. Hang on, John. Well, Lockett got caught early in the fight, yeah. early in that round caught with a left hand solidly there but he came back quite impressively from there yeah he certainly did he needs to really get with the program now and start putting the punches together because he cannot afford to let Lockett lead off on him like that well Lockett's the man who's got the support from the crowd and he'll be drawing on that let's do that come on deep breath he's trying to wear you down that's his plan now he's tried the first two rounds to take it out and he can't do it now he's going to try and wear you down. He thinks that you're going to lose all idea. Get back to boxing him now, Gary. Get back to the man to fight. Yeah, you've won every round. Now come on, hand to fight, hand to fight. Seventh round, and Gary Lockett asking his trainer, his corner, if he's winning the fight. And he, the reply was, yeah, of course you are, you've won every round. Well, I don't think that's the case. I think it's closer than that. But it was interesting as well that he was saying that Rhodes now is trying to just wear him down and thinks that he'll run out of ideas. Maybe, but Lockett surely is ahead on the judges' cards. I just wonder if Rhodes uh, has got this as a, a kind of a two-way fight, split in half. You know, maybe the first half of the fight he was prepared to maybe give away and then inject real pace and urgency into the second half of the fight. It's a dangerous uh, tactic to have, but it might work for him. Rhodes is blocking a lot of Lockett's work. And he is forcing him back one way or another. See two there on the arms, followed by the right hand into the body. But Rhodes himself not throwing a lot of leather. Not enough just to mess Lockett around. He's got to throw more punches than he is at the moment. Well, he gets him on the back foot, he puts a little combination together, but he doesn't keep him there. He allows Lockett to come straight back at him. He's got Lockett at the moment on the back foot, which is exactly where he needs to keep him. Keep feeding him the jab. But then he, this is what I've said, he allows Lockett to come straight back at him. Well, a lot of it's covering up. That's a good shot, that's a good left hand from Rhodes. But he takes a solid right in response. There are a few whispers within boxing nowadays that Ryan Rhodes at 29 has become a little bit gun shy and maybe that's it he's tucking up and defending and keeping Lockett at bay parrying a lot of the blows but he's not actually gambling sufficiently to put himself into a position where he can strike and that means that Lockett is bossing most of it but now he catches Lockett with the left hand well Rhodes obviously his reflexes aren't going to be the same he's 30 years old now and this has to be the final throw of the dice for him. So mentally he's got the experience, he has to just try and really draw on it, push this boy on the back foot, really put the combinations together. Sorry, 29. I do apologise. Well, 
Apologies accepted. I'll just have a word with Ryan Rhodes. A traumatic thing getting to your 30th birthday. That was a good straight right from Rhodes, and uh, Lockett felt that one. That's Rhodes' best shot for some time, and a corner know it. They're trying to get Rhodes to capitalise now. There's a really nice, solid, sweet, straight, short right hand from Rhodes. And Lockett suddenly looks a little bit, little bit bamboozled in there. It's a better round for Rhodes. Rhodes had his best round of the fight for some time. Look at that good straight left, followed by hooks. And there was a lovely right hand in there as well later in the round. That's a good shot, that one from Rhodes, that straight one. He just, there he is, just touching him, and there's the right there hand. There you go, he's just touching the gloves, just see if he can find his range, and then bang, round come the hook. And he knew it. He knew that was a good one. Well, I reckon that Ryan Rhodes won that seventh round and that it is closing, maybe. Has he gauged it right? Is he going to come on strong down the final stretch, Ryan Rhodes? The boy, or the man they used to call the Spice Boy. It's a few years ago, isn't it? It certainly was, John. Well, he's gone from being a boy to a man now, and um, you know he's looking at the final chapter in his career, so you know, I want to try and just get this one, put this one in the bag, if he can. Lockett just looks as though he may be losing the plot a little bit in there. He was so much in control earlier on, but Rhodes has covered up and worked his way back into this fight. Lockett on my card, still a couple of rounds ahead, but there's still time for Rhodes to narrow the gap. Not a lot happening from Lockett's perspective at the moment. It's all Rhodes as he tries to force the pace. But Rhodes should try hooking in, bringing the hook round nice and wide, right round the peripheral vision. See if he can't inflict more damage on that damaged eye already. Lockett's landed nothing in this round, Duke. He's no. thrown punches, but they've all been taken on the gloves and the arms by Ryan Rhodes, who's fighting cutely defensively. Look, see that now, the left hook there did get through. That's about the first punch of the round which did, and Rhodes has landed three or four in response, and that's a good left hook. Nice right uppercut come left hook by Rhodes, but there you go, Rocket just comes straight back at him. Action starting to hot up a little bit in the eighth round. It's been a bit of a chess match, quite a lot of this fight, but unexpectedly because Lockett has that puncher's reputation. Hardly a word from the Lockett corner. Brian Hughes, his trainer, quiet, studious. On the other, on the other side, shouts coming from the Rhodes corner to up his rate and try and keep Lockett back in reverse gear. It's better from the champion, better from Gary Lockett. What a champion digging in now quite well. Rhodes still stalking, but not being busy enough. Getting out punched now, getting beaten to the punch. The reflexes just quite aren't the same. It's good for Lockett. Good hand speed and suddenly Rhodes looks a little bit more vulnerable, a bit more open to attack. It takes him well though, doesn't he? Yeah, but it's a good round for the champion. He's landed some good shots on Ryan Rhodes. I think he needed it. Really good. It's good stuff. Look at that, look at that guy. He was beating him to the jab then, oh, he's beating yeah. him to the street. Well, right Gary Lockett is being it. told that he's a long way ahead. Smoke. Yeah, boxing and beauty ball. I'm not so sure. He's back the left up nice. He Don't may be a couple of rounds in front, well, yeah? but it's certainly Every not ball, in the pocket yet. Well, this is a good attack from him, John. It's a good two-fisted attack. Slight clash of heads there, but unintentional. Predominantly, though, it was all lock it in that round. Rhodes, though, takes the shots well. Yeah, I didn't get it. Yeah, I didn't get it. Keep going. Come on, Daddy. Yeah, get a drink, man. Corners, 10 seconds. Drink, 
Same shape, Paul. Right, that'll do, that'll do. Doing really yeah. well, sir. Yeah. Seconds out, yeah. round nine. Checking my scorecard. I've got Lockett two to three rounds ahead. Subjective, it's a subjective thing. Yeah, but you Rhodes, can't... If Rhodes wins the last three rounds big, who knows? Yeah, you can't help but feel that he's in uh, quite a comfortable lead, John, at least by two, as you said, maybe three rounds, because he's, he's outworking Rhodes. You'd have expected Rhodes to outwork him being, you know, supposedly the better boxer, but, you know, Lockett's just not having it. Of course, we, think, we see things from one side of the ring. Sometimes you get a different perspective from different angles. Lockie hasn't employed an uppercut throughout the whole of this fight. I wonder if he's going to put some of them in. Crowd a bit subdued. I think they expected more fireworks than they've got from this. It's better from Rhodes, but again, just a single shot. I think it's reached the point where if Rhodes is going to claim this title somehow, he's going to have to gamble. He's going to have to go in there and try and throw some bombs of his own. He can punch Rhodes and he needs to do that now. Yeah, I'd be inclined to agree with that one, John. That's a good call. He's going to have to throw caution to the wind. He's got to gamble. You know, I mean, you're talking, you're talking about big stakes at risk here. And Lockett, at the moment, I think he's doing enough to edge it. It's all Lockett, you see. It's not particularly effective work, but the punches are coming from the champion. Yeah, the accumulation. It's the accumulation of punches that he's throwing, the volume there that he's throwing, you know, at working roads. Two, three punches to one. Caught Rhodes with a chopping right hand. Rhodes shakes his head as much as to say he wasn't hurt, but I think he was just wobbled a little bit by that one. Yeah, a little bit of bravado there by Rhodes, but he's getting outworked again. Nice rolling in and out from Lockett. Good lateral movement. Rhodes is letting this one slip away. He's not doing enough in this round. This has been the champion's round again. And he's going further clear, at least my way of looking at it. Good round for good round for Gary Lockett. Tenth round, and the way it's going, this is looking as though it's Gary Lockett's fight. Rhodes has got to impose himself big time in these last three rounds. Well, you just feel he's had the tools to do the job, but just not, not used them. He hasn't got him out of the box. You know, this is a big opportunity for him, Ryan Rhodes. But he's letting it slip. It's Lockett who's using the jab and it's Lockett is using the right hands and the left hooks. Lockett was... Well, that's a good right hand from Rhodes and Lockett's down. Well, suddenly we are right back in with a real fight. Terrific right hand from Ryan Rhodes and my goodness, did he need that? Right out of the blue, John. Right out of the blue, the corner read the right act to him, Ryan Rhodes, and he's answered it. He, he, ga a... he gambled, he went in there delivered and now can he turn this fight around and Lockett's has gone. Lockett recovered He's has gone. he recovered oh good shot from Lockett good left hand but Rhodes now you can see the look on his face he fancies this one he thinks he can take Lockett out of there another good right hand from Rhodes and Lockett is in dangerous territory Johnny's legs are absolutely wooden look at his legs they're stiff 
two more big right hands from Rhodes and the corner are imploring Rhodes to go forward and to find a way to get lock it out of there he was behind probably by three or four points on our card anyway and Rhodes now has got himself right back into this fight but with every second that passes Lockett's head will clear has he recovered Rhodes has to go right hand happy and just keep throwing it because Lockett's got no answer to it his legs are still gone, they're gone again. He's got Good nothing. shots once more from Ryan Rhodes. Teed off with that right hand. Two more heavy shots. Mickey Van, the referee, taking a close look at Gary Lockett. Mickey Van in his 135th world title fight tonight of one sort or another. One of the most experienced referees in the country. And has Rhodes done enough to get himself back into this fight? And he's teeing off on Lockett's head now, almost at will. Yeah, but the clock's running down, he's running out of time. He needs to really, you know, throw caution to the wind, as you said, and put it all in now. He might not have a chance in the next round. Last. Every second counts. Yep, into the last 30 seconds of the round. Now, Rhodes once more, surely, has got to gamble. He's got to try and get in there and take him now. Well, look, it still hasn't recovered fully, but he's doing the right thing. He's trying to just smother Rhodes if he can to smother his work but he still hasn't recovered two more big right hands from Rhodes but the bell's going to save Lockett I think big end to the round big round for Ryan Rhodes well what drama they always say in boxing it only takes one and he is now in dangerous territory. Let's take a look at the knockout or the knockdown when it came. Well, just as you thought he was slipping away from Ryan Rhodes, looked like a temple shot again. And down goes um, Gary Lockett. It didn't just land one, though. He landed again and again, and you see it from several angles there. Good shot from Ryan Rhodes, but he couldn't get him out of there. And Lockett may still be ahead on the judges' cards, possibly. Well, I tell you what, Lockett will, he will absolutely hate yourself in the morning if he lets this one slip away. Well, that was a big round for Ryan Rhodes and Lockett's corner are just saying to him, you've got to walk away from this now. I'm not sure that that's right, because if he just walks away from Rhodes, that's going to play right into Rhodes' hands, because Lockett, when he walks away, when he goes back, pretty much does nothing in a fight. Yeah, we just have to wonder if his head's cleared, if the 60-second interval was enough for his head to clear. I think the uh, crowd was told before the round began that it was the 10th round. It's not, it's the 11th, and on my card, it means that Rhodes has got to win the last two for a draw, I wonder. Well, it would be interesting to know how these judges have scored this fight. Rhodes certainly now full of confidence, as well he might be. But Lockett's recovered well, hasn't he? Good right hand, good body shot. Rhodes is looking for him, though, he's looking for the opportunity, walking him down, trying to find the opening to throw that concussive right hand again. Well, if he wants to win this fight, he's going to have to just do exactly what he did in the last round. You know, put the combinations together. You know, when you've got a guy hurt, you know, everything you feel, every, every punch you throw, he will feel. So he needs to faint with some of these punches, try and draw his lead. He's only got to touch him once or twice around, around the temple just to open up that guard. Here he comes, trying to gamble. Lock it, though, slipped it suggesting that he has recovered. Well, Lockett should be holding on in these, in these uh, clinches just to buy himself a little bit more valuable time. See, when he, let, when he allows Ryan Rhodes just to put two or three little punches together, Rhodes knows that he's in punching range. He just uses that as his yardstick. Rhodes has allowed his work rate to drop again in this 11th round. He's not had any of the success that he had in the previous round. Yeah, he's not looking as sharp as he did, John. We just wonder if he punched himself out in the last round. He hasn't been able to capitalise on the work that he did in the round previous. The big effort was in the 10th. Rhodes' best moments of the fight. 
But Lockett, as he's been told by his corner, just getting back to his boxing now. Yeah, Rhodes waiting much too long. He's walking him down, but not putting the punches together. We'll have a listen in the corners between before this final round. Be interesting to hear what they make of it. Rhodes just shook his left. Put your leg back. Put your leg back. All you've got to do is keep tight and circle him and keep yeah. working him off. He's, He's just telling what you are, son. This is the most important three minutes of your career. OK, now, come on, come let's on. go. Yeah, Don't look for one shot. Come on. Well, I can say that again. I've got Lockett winning this fight. Rhodes, I suspect, needs to put him down again. Interesting fight not turned out to be quite the bomb burner that some people predicted but it's starting to look as though it's going to go the distance both men have been told by their corners get out there and have a big last round and make absolutely sure in Lockett's case and three minutes which according to Ryan Rhodes corner are the most important of his career that's a good right hand from Rhodes yeah, Rhodes went back to the, co to the corner at the end of the last round and shook his head, almost in disgust. He didn't, wasn't happy with himself at all. Well, well, he might not be. I mean, he hardly threw anything of note at all in the 11th, having had his man down in the 9th, in the 10th. He then let him off the hook. Is anybody going to be able to find, is either fighter going to be able to find the real bingo punch here in this last round? Lockett possibly does not need it. Rhodes, I think, does. That's a good left hand from Lockett. Rhodes, again, just shakes his head and says, it didn't hurt me. A bit of professional kidology in there. There's no snap, no sting behind Ryan Rhodes' punches now which is pity pat punches, he's, he's walking forward OK, but the, the power's in uh, in locket shots. Arm punches. Catches, catches Lockett with the right hand, but not really thrown with quite the intent that he would have wished. Yeah, Lockett's absolutely fine out of his skin for this last round. Good shot from Lockett. Yeah, right hand, straight one. And Rhodes trying to bully Lockett backwards. Into the final minute now of this WBU middleweight title fight. Has Gary Lockett defending his title here? The Welshman, the local man from Cumbran, has he done enough? Yeah, I've got him winning this round up to this point, John. He's throwing the more effective punches. Rhodes bravely trying to come forward, but all the work is coming from Lockett. That's two good shots, two good head shots from Lockett. And another one. Rhodes, Rhodes is coming to forward, trying to, trying to get to him, trying to get to the head of Lockett, trying to gamble bravely. Everything's on the line in the last few seconds of the fight. Rhodes trying desperately to somehow sway this back and he's having the best of the last 30 seconds or so and the two embrace and that was a tough tough fight Lockett smiles he thinks he's won it Rhodes has done the best he can Lockett chaired aloft by his corner man he thinks he's kept his title and I have to say I tend to agree Ladies and gentlemen, we have a unanimous decision. Judge Larry O'Connell scores the contest 115 to 112. Judge Carl Rogers sees the contest 114 to 112. And Judge Reg Thompson scores the contest 117 to 111. All in favor of the winner by unanimous decision. And still, the WBU's middleweight champion of the world, Gary.
Rocket, Lockett. So Lockett takes it by margins of 3 points, 2 points and 6 points. I had it by 4 and I don't think Ryan, Ryan in his Rose. heart of hearts really thought that he'd quite done enough. He gave it his best. He gave Commission it a terrific Paul, shot, it was a good Mr. fight, but I think that's the right decision and Lockett is still WBU middleweight champion. Gary Lockett. Well, and the champion comes through there, Gary Lockett yeah. retains his title, but was Ryan Rhodes ambitious enough in there? Surely the fight was there for the taking, wasn't it? He was ambitious, but what he'd done was he gambled in fighting too close. We didn't think he was going to take the fight to Lockett like that, because Lockett is a phenomenal puncher. But what he'd done was he just pressed on him and, and, and walked, tried to walk him down, but took a lot of body punches in the early rounds. And I think when he did have Lockett in dire straits in the 10th, he didn't have enough energy to finish him off. And I thought he lost by three, four rounds. Did you really? And I, I really thought that he deserved I mean, In fact, I spoke to him just now as he walked out and I said, look, you know, I didn't think he deserved He said, do you think I won it? And I said, no, <laughs> Ryan, I've got to be honest with you. Uh, I just didn't think he'd done enough. But he took some phenomenal punches. And a horrible start for him as a well. very bad start from knocked out in the first round, had to fight his way back into the fight. Very brave and courageous, but I just didn't think he was busy enough. It was good news the two got it on after all this uh, weight. Was it slightly disappointing, not so many fireworks that you expected? No, I, I, I didn't think it would be. I thought would, Ryan would try to be tricky and manoeuvre and keep things at long range and, and try to be as... as you know, as elusive as possible. But in fact, he actually made it an exciting fight by walking forward. I didn't think it was unexciting. It was very much an exciting fight. And it lit up in the 10th in the tenth round. And just finally, uh, Lockett underlining his potential. Yeah, I mean, Lockett is no spring chicken at 29 yeah. years old. He's got to get on with the middleweight division. It's full of immensely talented young men. You know, Jermaine Taylor, Arthur Abrahams, Felix Sturm. It's a very tough division to win a world title in. But I'll tell you, he can go on and fight for the European title and maybe even have a shot at the world title. Who knows? But I think these guys are just a little bit above him at the moment. I think they had around about eight hours of boxing here and we've come to the end of it. Cracking action as well. Let's reflect the two fights that I'm sure all of you...